Hello guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be reading one star reviews on Goodreads for books that I used to love. I've seen similar videos floating around the internet lately. I thought this would be especially fun to do for books that I read as a teenager and really loved and kind of compare them to how I feel about them now. So let's get into it. I've got Goodreads on my phone and I'm just going to be reading through some of these reviews. The first book is High Society by Ali Carter. It's about a group of teenagers who still find art just for fun. And there are 93,000 reviews and the average rating is a 3.92 star review. But we're gonna find the one star reviews. This first review just says, nope, 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 I DNF'd after the first chapter. Okay. Similar, 1.5 rounded down, DNF'd at 30%, boring, 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 I literally fell asleep. <laughs> this review says, DNF'd after page 46, nice idea, like if Neil Caffrey from White Collar had an obnoxious, full of herself, spoiled daughter. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can see it. I can kind of see it now, actually. But Nell Caffrey was my first TV crush, so... This next review says, Came because I loved Gallagher, Gallag Gallagher Girls. Gallagher Girls. Gallagher. Gallagher. I cannot say that word. Gallagher Girls. Stayed for hell. He is great. But is he enough to keep going in the series? I guess we'll see. Honestly, though, weren't we all just there to read about hell? <laughs> Leah rated it one star and said, No. <laughs> Some of these are so funny. Not that good. Uninspired. Predictable. I get it. I can see why... A lot of people complain about it being quite slow and a little boring. But let's move on to the next book, which is Divergent by Veronica Roth. This book had all of us in like such a chokehold 10 years ago. And this first review says, jumping out of moving trains for literally no reason. That is so cool. Much bravery. Very wow. Question, why don't the trains ever stop? Why are they running when they're not being used? So many times Triss is able to jump, wow, on board and it just takes her places. No questions, no dramas. This is especially curious as early in the book it is mentioned that supplies slash resources are running low. Why waste them on a speeding train that is empty most of the time, members rarely leaving the compound, and on a constant loop? She has a point. I never really thought about the trains. Why are they still running? Good question. The next question is, considering the lack of resources in this horrifying future, why is it that Dauntless Compound is underground? That is an economically retarded move, as there are a number of abandoned skyscrapers just rotting away. Wow, such innovation, very interest. Her all caps phrases are cracking me up. Okay, next question. How and why did this world come to be? Nothing makes sense. Who thought it was a good idea to split the population into fractions based on four vague character traits? And how is it that Divergent is so rare? Moreover, here is the obvious one. Why did anyone think it was a good idea to let one faction control everything? Then she goes on to say, why is this book like 500 pages long? The plot is essentially Triss doing simulations, aka nothing of real danger or importance. Sometimes it's the same simulation again and again. They even have a detailed game of capture the flag or whatever. Ugh. It's almost as if Roth read the Hunger Games and tried to recreate it, then got stuck on the training phase. She actually has a lot of good points. Um, what are they even training for? Why is it taking so long? Ugh, this faction idea just does not work. For a world where there hasn't been a murder in years, the reactions to deaths and near-death experiences in the training are ridiculous. Come on. Fighting for no plausible reason over and over and over. Much excite. Wow. Very violence. 
Real smart, erudite. Geniuses. Leaving Four in charge of your secret weapon when he could snap out of his trance in literally one minute. Yes, the caps are necessary. That is a cop-out. Stupid, 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 stupid. Ugh. This person is very passionate about this, and I can respect that. The next book is Matched by Ali Condi. I loved this book so much, and I remember when I was a teenager, I went to a writing conference where I lived, and she came and did a presentation. And so I got to go to this presentation, I got to take my Matched book, she signed it for me, and I was like so excited. It was the highlight of my summer that year. But we're going to read some one-star reviews for the Matched series. This person wrote a poem for their one-star review, which is a little extra, but we're going to read it. Once upon a time, there was a girl who wandered through the stacks until she saw the word matched in lime. With a squill, she snatched it down, admiring the model's gown. In delight, she read the back, and hallelujah, nothing did the description lack. Love, rebellion, and more. Surely reading this wouldn't be a chore. So she started out on page one, and immediately she wanted to shoot it with a gun. But bravely she read on, all the while thinking, what a con. The MC had a contrived love for poetry, plus there was no chemistry. And are those people crying over cut down trees? With a sigh, she rolled her eyes. Definitely not great teen lit. Through the whole book she snored, oh yes, she was utterly bored. At the end, friends asked her thoughts, turns out a fan she was not, so she left the wretched book to rot. The end. Yeah, I think that one wins so far. This was written by Nora on November 9th, 2022. Maybe you should write a book of poetry if you're watching this, Nora. Deba rated it one star. No, just no. Mariam said, I did not hate this book because I am a nice person, filled with rainbows and candies and unicorns. But if I was not a nice person, I would have hated this book. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, let's move on to the last one, which is Maximum Ride by James Patterson. The first book in the series is called The Angel Experiment. It has 226,000 reviews and a 4.07 star rating. This review says, You know when you're 9 and you're scrolling through Wattpad and find an 11-year-old writer writing a 14-slash-15-year-old protagonist who's sarcastic and witty but also super important and cool and oh yeah. Anything girly is gross because other girls suck. That's how this book read. I feel like she does have a point because what I remember from the Maximum Ride books was that the plot was really weird and strange and kind of all over the place and almost like a fever dream. Like you just wonder how James Patterson came up with this idea in the first place and it does feel like the plot could totally be some random Wattpad book that like a 12 year old wrote <laughs> with no like end in sight where they just release chapter by chapter and it just goes on forever. I think that's accurate, actually. This review was back from 2013, and it says, Yeah, no. I read this book when I was younger and absolutely adored it. I wanted to fly, and I wanted to have an interesting life like the bird kids did. Then I grew up, and reality set in. I realized this book kind of sucks. A lot. There are plots that go nowhere, plot holes, pointless characters, pointless exchanges, and sequences. And that, friends, all begins with the main character. I hate Maximum Ride. She's a fighting chick with a tragic past, and she's not very good at being a fighting chick with a tragic past either. And then there's Fang. Fang is also an archetype. He is known as tall, dark, and handsome, and that's it. <laughs> an angel, who boy, angel. She is the definition of saccharine. She's annoying and obviously the one we're supposed to feel sorry for, not even to get into the things she does later in the books. Honestly, if you don't have good characters, I can't read your book. Those were some of the books I loved when I was younger. And now, reading back through some of these one-star reviews, as an adult, a lot of them have some pretty good points. But I'm just going to put on my rose-colored glasses and cherish the happy memories I had with those books. <laughs> 
Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna end this video here. Let me know if you enjoyed it and if you want to see similar videos and I will see you guys again very soon.